Welcome to another video of Commodore 64 games that I load from cassette. Today's game is one of my personal favorites. Um, I don't really think this was a bad game at all. Uh, it's a game that was released, I think, back in 1984, possibly 1985. And it's uh, a game that was released by, I believe, Argus Publishing. It was a tie-in to a movie that was released at the same, at the same time. And uh, that game is is called Give My Regards to Broad Street, which is basically based on a Paul McCartney movie. And uh, generally you drive around London trying to look for, uh, looking for musical notes or music, lost music, because apparently Paul has lost uh, one of his songs and uh, it's your job to drive around London and meet certain individuals and uh, they may or may not have a part of the music with them. So you basically got to meet them at um, subway stations uh, around London. And uh, by the way, you got to do this all before midnight. Uh, it was an enjoyable game. Um, and uh, I did enjoy playing this, not necessarily to find all the musical notes, but just to just drive around this little car. And... Um, As the game progresses, or as the day progresses, um, there are other vehicles that are driving around too, and they become more and more aggressive as the time elapses. Um, I have finished this game several times. Um, it's not too difficult. The game does random randomize uh, the locations of uh, the individuals carrying the musical notes. Uh, but generally, each of those characters tend to follow the... Uh, they, they tend to uh, appear at, at the same subway stations. Uh, I'll explain more about that uh, once the game does load up. Now, as I recall, back in the day, uh, this particular game actually did take quite a while to load. Um, for those of you that remember, you know, we would load these from cassettes and uh, they would have a tape counter on them. I believe, give my regards to Broad Street, would, would, ha would reach up to like the high 100s, like 180 or so on the tape counter before the game would load. So that's, a, it's about, oh, I want to say about five or six minutes, maybe even higher than that. But it's an enjoyable game. And, uh... I don't have the original um, box for the game, although I do have the original cassette. And funnily enough, the original cassette is located in one of my double cassette boxes. In this particular case, it's located in my gauntlet uh, cassette box. In fact, that was supposed to be this video, but once I opened it up and I saw Give My Regards to Broad Street was in there, I said, you know what, let me load up that particular game instead of gauntlet. So. Uh, Gauntlet will come in a future video, probably the one I make after this. Um, but yeah, I want to show you, give my regards to Broad Street. There's no loading music. Uh, I think there is going to be a, um, a loading picture that will pop up in a short while. Um, and the game and the music, um, uh, it actually plays the theme tune for Band on the Run. And... Um, the the missing song or the notes that you're 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 trying to locate throughout the game for this missing song is actually um it is the name of uh oh, i forgot the name of the song there no more lonely nights uh, which is another Paul McCartney song which i think was released around the same time um but yeah you have to collect i think 10 musical notes in a computer calendar day and uh, of course if you crash you end up back at the Abbey Road Studios which is in North London so while the game's loading up I will uh, actually just bring up this article here that I found uh, online at uh, the Paul McCartney project .com. Uh, this particular game was in fact loaded, uh, or actually it was released for the 64 and the ZX Spectrum back in 1985. Yeah, it 
It was developed by Argus Press. And this is interesting. I never knew this. It says here that the uh, the Commodore 64 version was also published by Mastertronic in the US. So, uh, if any of you guys in the US um, have this game, um, feel free to leave a comment here. If you enjoyed this game as much as I did, you know, uh, please leave a uh, a like on the video um, and a comment. You know of uh, of the memories that this brings back for you. So from that same website that I was telling you about, um, there's a short description of uh, what the game is about, in addition to what I just already told you. Basically, the player must drive around London in search of band members, each of whom holds a key part of a missing song. Once all band members are found, the player returns to Abbey Road Studios to mix the song, ending the game. Clues as to the band's members' whereabouts are given in the form of uh, times and tube stations that the band, band members will appear at. Players must must be timely as arriving too early will get the car booted by the police uh, thugs roam the streets in cars I think we used to call them meanies that was the, the technical name for those uh, those other cars that drive around any type of collision with them sends you straight back to Abbey Road uh, it does also mention it two of McCartney's songs Band on the Run and No More Lonely Nights appear in the Commodore 64 version only um, the latter ver the latter is heard in the ZX Spectrum, which would be No More Lonely Nights. I've never seen the uh, the Spectrum version, uh, and I can't imagine playing the game without hearing Band on the Run throughout. Uh, and it doesn't take long for that that Commodore 64 SID chip tune to get stuck in your head. So as I said, uh, we have to get into the high 100s for the game to start, and I do see that my tape counter is at, it's coming up to 120 now on the tape counter, so we're probably about two thirds of the way in. The game will probably load up within the next minute or so, minute and a half, two minutes. And I believe once the game has finished loading, the game starts immediately. This game will be added to my definitive playlist that I've mentioned perhaps most of my other videos, uh, if not all of them. Uh, but I am compiling a definitive Commodore 64 game list that will consist of uh, 400 games that I have in my collection. Um, and my estimate is it's going to be about 100 hours long. So if you're really bored, you're going to have 100 hours that you can uh, spend watching Commodore 64 games loading from scratch um, I know there are other videos there that just show you the actual gameplay and that's it well the point of my channel is to just show you how it was from from scratch like you turn the Commodore 64 on you hit shift and uh, and uh, run stop you load the game you wait this is what we all had to go through folks we had to sit and wait for our games to load up from cassette but then you'll play it for you know a few minutes half an hour an hour a couple of hours in some cases um, but this is what we did and uh, the purpose like I said of my channel is to show you guys especially you guys in the younger generation this is what we had to endure back in the 1980s and you know uh, I my son is uh, 13 years old and uh, I try to explain to him that you know he doesn't really think too much of these games um, and I tell him he says listen you have to understand uh, that these games were written inside 64 kilobytes of RAM and, you know you got games here like for example Modern Warfare is like a 200 gigabyte download or more um, you know and I tried to explain to him the concept of you know bytes kilobytes you know megabytes gigabytes you know and uh, he sort of gets it but uh, his response is that these games are all rubbish so <laughs> that's his opinion but yeah. 
I'm not 64 games. Uh, you know, um, there's this uh, special thing about them. You know, there are people still watching these videos on YouTube because there is this fascination of what we could do with an 8-bit computer. All right, we're up to coming up to 170 now on the tape counter. We're about uh, about 10 minutes in, actually, or at least 10 minutes since I started the video. And we're almost there, I think. We're at 185 on the tape counter. And the tape is still turning. So we now just hit 200 on the tape counter, and I am getting a bit worried because I don't see any activity that the game is even still loading. Well, there you go. Final tape counter was 203. So this is Band on the Run, <laughs> Sid style. So as you can see, I'm out there at Abbey Road Studios there in North London. And uh, I'll go ahead and get this game started. Um, you see that we start at 9am. We have until midnight to, uh, to uh, collect all 10 notes and return back to this location on the map. So this guy you see here, he's a... Uh, um, that person there, they're at West Kensington, which is also West London. What I'll do, that guy that was at... What I generally like to do is... Uh, the nearest station to me is... Is actually made a veil. I should, probably should have gone the other way. Get there. Depending on how the game loads up... Just get used to it. Usually Ringo Starr shows up here. I, I think he lives up here in Maida Vale, which is just up here somewhere. So, I'll wait here in the middle of the road, and I'm hoping that Ringo Starr shows up here any moment. Basically, you just got to guess where each of these people are going to be coming up. So, that particular person there, he's at Mornington Crescent right now, but the arrow pointing up indicates that he just arrived at Mornington, Mornington Crescent. 
Uh, if you play this game for a little while, or if you're actually from London, you have an idea of where these locations are, whether they're in North London, South London, uh, East, West, you'll know. And uh, with a bit of luck, with a bit of good fortune, you're close to where they are. So it's come to 10 a.m. Sometimes people do arrive on the hour, on the hour, on the half hour. So it's come to 10 o'clock now. Let's see if it changes. No, it didn't. Now when you have misfortune, uh, sometimes you're like, oh, here, I'm waiting a main event. As soon as I pull away and I start heading somewhere else, you'll see that Ringo Starr shows up a main event. And then I'll have to wait for him to either come back, meet him at some other train station, or wait for him to come back home. I'm going to give it until 10.30, they're going to leave. So that's Linda McCartney there. She's in Holland Park. She's going down. Now, she's probably going to be going to... Uh, uh, she's going to be going to uh, Green Park or somewhere like that, which is like central, central. This particular road here, this actually runs from east to west. You can actually pick up some good speed here. Just to show you, um, right here is where she was. This first station here, I believe, is Holland Park. Yep. And then I think uh, we've got Notting Hill, I think, here. Yep. And then we have Queensway. You know what? She normally does come to Lancaster Gate. Ah, oh, that's, she's down, that, believe it or not, that particular character, that's uh, Tracy Ullman. Uh, she was in this particular movie. On streak. So I don't know much luck yet. You know, I might head back to Maida Vale because uh, I've got a sneaky feeling that I think you feel that Ringo Starr is going to wake up. I think he's a late riser. Ah. Ah. I don't think I'm going to get to Maida Vale before midday. Wait right here. This Kilburn of Maida Vale is just to my southeast. Down that street there. I 
haven't seen any of the enemy cars yet. Meanies. So what do you guys think of uh, Band, of, Band on the Run? I think it's a good... Uh, Catch him. Now, this guy, I've got a feeling he's coming to kill him. He's coming down, he's going down at Wild Chapel. So, either he's going to go to Elephant and Castle or he's going to come to kill him. Now, the reason why I say that is because I've played this game so much, and as I said, the characters they have a tendency of visiting certain subway stations. You know, so, I know that this guy typically moves between Elephant and Castle, Kilburn, and uh, White Chapel, maybe one or two others. She's coming, she's going down to Charing Cross now. Either she's going to come back to Heartland Park or she's going to go to Lancaster Gate. Tracy Albert's coming to kill but that's a possibility. So we won't go too far. I'm still surprised that we haven't seen uh, we haven't seen Ringo Starr make an appearance yet. So I'm wondering uh now it's odd that when I upload these videos to YouTube, some of the songs, some of the videos, oh here you go, uh, made avail, stop, that's, uh, that's Ringo there in the white and that's Paul, I'm Paul there in the black suit. Excellent. So I picked up three notes there from uh, from Ringo. Now I'm going to move on. Now, you know, you could get lucky where, you know, oh, you see, look, now here comes the traffic warden. I've got to get out of here. If, if he catches me, then uh, he's going to send me back to, to, uh, to Abbey Road. So, yeah, what I was saying is that um, some of the games that I uh, upload to YouTube, they get flagged for copyright infringement. That is the strangest thing. Like some of the songs are being flagged because there's like like modern day versions have been made and they're claiming copyright on the songs that were written back by Rob Hubbard in the mid 80s. Yet these other guys are claiming copyright uh, infringement. Um, and then in instances like this, uh, it's going to be interesting to see if uh, if YouTube is going to pick up on this song being banned on the run. And if they will, they'll probably flag it and. Uh, You know what, I want to go to uh, that old guy is going to be going back down Holland, Holland Park, so I'm going to try and get there. But yeah, I um, when I get those uh, copyright flags, I do dispute them, and I'm, I'm like, and I always say, like, no, why is this version, like, the original version being flagged for copyright infringement for someone, someone's video that they they made their own? musical version of a tune that was written by Rob Hubbard. They're claiming it as their own... Yeah, and on top of that, they claim it as their own work. So, I get a bit frustrated when I see that. But they're not giving proper credit and they're claiming copyright. Uh, one of them that I did... There was one video I did, I can't remember which game it was. Um, there was one game and... Uh, I don't know, maybe it's a false positive, but YouTube flagged it. My, my, my song, well not my song, but the Commodore 64 version of the song didn't sound anything like what they claim, claimed I was uh, supposed to be infringing. So I disputed that one as well. But yeah, there's a, a 
and that, and, you know, the guy was claiming the, you know, that they had composed it. They had composed the songs themselves, and I was like, oh, this, game, this song came out in, like, 1984, you know, this is the original version. How are you claiming copyright? So right now I'm waiting for the old man to come back out at um, Holland Park. There's a possibility that this guy's going to come to Queensway or or Notting Hill. I can't remember which of those two that he would normally visit. Uh, you know, with a bit of luck. I mean, I think you only have to get ten notes. Possibly it's twelve, but you can you can you don't have to meet every single player. Once you've got your twelve notes or your ten notes, you head straight back to Queensway. That's right. Did I miss it? Oh, I missed him. Oh, that sucks. I was right there as well. All right, so he just came up. There's a chance he's going to come back down. Yeah, so you, you know, theoretically, you only need to meet four guys and you, you can collect enough notes. It's three o'clock, coming up to four o'clock in the afternoon. I got I've got eight hours to go, which is probably about oh, I don't know. Uh, about maybe six or seven minutes. That guy, I've got a feeling he's going to Kilburn now, but I don't want to leave this area. And interesting, we haven't seen any of those uh, mini cars yet. See it? You saw that one there? Wait for this old guy. I think this old guy's gonna come out of Holland Park. So there's a couple of ways of playing it. I've, I've found, as you've seen here, the best way to play this game is to kind of anticipate where they're going to be and sit and wait, rather than just driving aimlessly around the map. Because uh, you often just miss each other by, by a few moments. Now that last guy, I should have got him at Queen, Queensway. I knew he was going to be there, and I just screwed up because I wasn't... I didn't, right in front of the station when I tried to launch it. So he's killed. I told you that guy was going to kill me, didn't I? So, uh, you know what? Tracy Oldman's going to come there too. So, I'm going to kind of hope that I get the old guy here, the other guy, at, the younger guy at Queensway, and then go up to go back up to Kilburn to meet Tracy Oldman. That should be my four people. That should give me the 12 notes. And what will be nice about that is that I'll be uh, near to the Abbey Road studio, so I don't have to navigate the entire map. Oh my goodness! Now I'm in trouble. That's kind of messed up my whole gameplay. Alright, that's kind of screwed me up. And you know what could what would be worse? Is if the old guy comes out of, out of Holland Park.
you know, I got a feeling that this guy is going to Morning, uh, Mornington Crescent, but I, uh, the sticks to the plan. Let me. I know the old guy's not going to stay in Holland Park forever. Oh my God, that guy just left Kilburn. So he's probably going to Elephant Castle now. And he's an elephant. Oh my goodness. It's all going wrong now, isn't it? Alright. Holland Park, that's where we're heading. He, look, I told you he was coming out of Holland Park. And I have no clue where he's going to be. Uh, this has all gone wrong, isn't it? It's all gone wrong, mate. I'm at Holland Park now. See, now, he's probably going... I'm going to... You know what? take a chance and, and say that he's heading to tower oh you see that I just flew past that guy huh. Hammersmith oh I'm close to Hammersmith I think I'm not gonna make it in time Hang around Tottenham Court Road because there's a possibility. That they're going... Oh my god. It's bad news, folks. He's in West Kensington, but I already collected his notes. Sometimes, yeah, I'd load up this game just to drive around, just to, you know, just to chill out a bit. I would load this game up, just drive around, listen to Band on the Run. And I did enjoy this game. This game is not a bad game at all. If you disagree, leave a comment and tell me why. Yeah, I guess it can be a bit repetitive, but, uh, you know, it's not a bad game. I really don't think it's a bad game. Convince me otherwise. So in a way, this game's a bit open worldish, isn't it? that Linda McCartney is going to show up at Lancaster Gate. I 
think she was last seen at Pimlico. And the other side of the old guy come out, he went down at Holland Park, he's probably coming back up at Heathrow. And I don't think Heathrow's even on the, on the game map. So there's about three hours of game time left, uh, which is probably about five minutes, because it looks like each minute is a second. So, uh, about three minutes left, three hours, 180 seconds. And, uh, it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to finish the game on this particular playthrough. But basically, once you have collected all of the, uh, the notes, for the missing song. Um, you go back to Abbey Road and you have to then mix the uh, No More Lonely Nights song. It's like, from what I recall, it's like three sliders, so you've got to like add bass melody and... Uh, I can't remember what the thing was. Bass melody and some, some, some other instrument. You mix them in together and then you hit record in, in, the, in that particular menu. how I've parked my car so it gives them enough clearance so they don't crash into me. It's getting late. Ah, uh, he's at Kilburn. Shit. I should have been up there. He's not coming back out. At 10 o'clock at night, he's not coming back out. There's a possibility that Tracy Elmer might come up there, though. Um... there. If I see her on the move, I will definitely head there. He's an elephant. So, ah, uh, he, this guy here might be going, he's going to be heading home, so he's probably going back to Morton Crescent. Alright, so I'm hoping that she's going to be heading to, either she's going to go to Lancaster Gate or Holland Park. She's leaving Pimlico now. So I'll go and get the car ready to leave. But I'll have to boogie. You know what? I got a strong feeling she's 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 gonna be going to Holland Park. She's not gonna be coming she's not gonna be coming to Lancaster Gate there. No way. See how those meanies are travelling a little bit faster now? Camden Town, that's right, that's where it lives. He might be coming back to Holland Park. He's going now, so he might be coming here as well. Let's we'll see if uh, Linda shows up here. Because I think she lives in Holland Park. So we're in the final hour of gameplay here. enough time to finish the game but I might pick up a few more notes.
There's the old guy. So let me uh, grab his notes. I only got one from him. Study a talk swig. I'm surprised he got here before Linda, but let's see. wait right here. There's a chance that she might be coming as well. He's coming back to meet the mail, but I would, like I said, already got his, his musical notes. As I was sitting there waiting. So there's the end of the game. <laughs> so yeah, as I was sitting there waiting for the end of the game to come up, um, I had a flashback, I think that there are some easter eggs in this game, or at least in the map, particularly in the, in the Hyde Park. Um, I'm not sure if that was true or not, but I heard that, that there was a rumour there was, that there was like some secret messages or something in Hyde Park. If any of you guys out there know if this is true or not, please leave a comment in there and uh, point me towards it. Um, not sure, I, I, that was something I'd heard many years ago, um, and I just never got around to investigating. If you heard the same, leave a comment. So folks, uh, that was Give My Regards to Broad Street 1985 by Argus Press, uh, based on the movie of the same name, Give My Regards to Broad Street, starring Paul McCartney, Tracy Ullman, Ringo Starr, um, and a few others. Um, I never saw the original movie. Um, from what I gather, though, the movie sucked. Although I am a big, huge Paul McCartney fan. Uh, but if you played this game, leave a comment. Let me know what your thoughts are. If you like the game, if you think this is a good game, give it a thumbs up. I'll see you guys in the next video. This is probably, a, you know, the longest one I've done. So, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm not going to edit it. This is this is how I do it, man. I do everything in one single take. But yes, I will see you on the next video, which is probably going to be Gauntlet. So uh, see you on the next one, fellas. Take care.